And tonight we are hearing from a Broken Arrow family who blames the COVID vaccine on their 18 year old daughter's death. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Sarah Wadley. And I'm Shay Rossi. They tell me they face challenges trying to get their daughter Trista's medical records and get her story out there. I'm looking into their concerns and what the medical community is saying about vaccine reactions in my Fox 23 investigation. She was just a really funny girl and she worked really hard. She was a little spitfire. <laughs> she was not really afraid of, of anyone or anything. Trista was a beautiful, beautiful girl. More full of life and joy than anybody I've ever known. That's how Taylor and Alan Martin describe their daughter, Trista. She graduated from Broken Arrow High School in 2022. That summer, she was promoted to a management position at a local Brahms. She walked her dogs and worked out with her older sister. She had plans to go to college and had a heart for helping others. After she passed, we found a bucket list that she had made when she was 16. Yeah, adopt a teenager, number 28. Number 29, be a foster parent. Number 27, be a mother. That one gets me a gut punch. Dreams that will never come true. Trista died November 9th, 2022, 12 days after her parents believed she got her second COVID vaccine. They found her vaccination card from her first appointment in her purse. It shows she received the first Pfizer shot July 20th of that year. Her parents had no idea. While Trista still lived at home, as an 18-year-old, she decided it was time to get her own doctor and make her own medical decisions. And so what did she say she was making the appointment for? Um, she said she was just going in for a checkup and to like establish care. And she didn't tell you after that first appointment that she had gotten the COVID vaccine. You learned that later. Right. Yeah. Okay. We learned that in the hospital the day she died. The Martins say they were not against the vaccine at the time, but with it being new and having some immunity from experiencing COVID, they felt their family didn't need it. Okay. She just woke up on that morning, November 9th, and said... I'm having trouble breathing. She was at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. um, she said, I'm having trouble breathing. And my whole entire body hurts. And she just went to go try and lay down. She thought she could like sleep it off. She was tough. Thought she was just getting sick or something. Um, and then her sister went to check on her and couldn't get her to wake up. And that's when they, they called me and I rushed over there. And by the time I got there, she was no longer breathing and we had to start CPR. and. It was a complete shock. Nothing, nothing that, nothing prior to that said nothing. she was going to be dead. Nothing. That had to be so hard performing CPR. It is something I wish on no one. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you cannot imagine. It's, and especially to performing CPR and it, it not helping, you know, I mean, it was, it's something that will never leave me. At the hospital, Trista's health continued to decline. There were so many people, and they were all trying the best they could. I mean, St. Francis, they were amazing. They really were. They, they had the, like, the heads of every department down there. They had people on the phone that weren't at work that day trying to figure out what was going on. They just couldn't. He said, he said well, I don't know what's causing it, but you know, her, her kidneys said, are failing. Said her toxicology had come back clean. She tested negative for COVID. They didn't know what was going on, but all of her organs were shutting down. Her heart was swollen and they were putting in a lot of fluids, but nothing was coming out. He said, because if we do CPR on her again, it's, it itself is going to kill her. Um, because we found out later that it had they had to continue CPR in the ambulance. She crashed multiple times on the way to the hospital. And someone coming to you and asking, you know, you have to make a decision whether to let your child die or not. And I mean, it is, it's unreal. It was like, it's just, it's unreal. Of course, we were like, no, we're not just going to make her come. You know, please continue to try, but... You don't kill her, but... Yeah, but if if she does start to crash, and I mean, we will let her go. So at 5.05, she was gone. 
it was it's it's the worst thing in the entire world i remember thinking you know okay what do i have to do i have to i have to hold her hand because i'm not going to get to do that ever again i'm going to kiss her forehead i got to give her a hug i got to smell her hair because whatever you need to get done you got to do it right now because it's your last shot was it at that time that you learned that she had taken the COVID vaccine? Um, it was actually on our way upstairs to the ICU. One of her friends said, yeah, I think I should probably tell you guys this, you know, that she got the COVID vaccine and she told us not to tell you. And, and yeah, and we were just kind of like, oh, you know, I wish she would have done that or I wish she would have told us or you know mm -hmm. anything but yeah, there's no way but it was like surely that yeah that's there, not that's what's was our doing initial this. thought is that yeah. It, yeah there's no way that this is what's doing this this mm -hmm. the whole world they're pushing this shot on everybody there's no way this is what did it a couple of weeks after Trista's passing they say they started researching covid vaccine reactions came together and said i i think this might be what killed her this is we started finding more people and everything everything that we would search, that would come back. That would be what was coming back. Things they said in the hospital, things we knew, uh, just what from... What kind of things? <sighs> well, the swollen heart, the myocarditis, um, the... Failure, elevated, yeah. Elevated um, uh, blood glucose levels when she was not by a diabetic. Because um, her glucose level was... Yeah, 610. 610. Yeah, and she wasn't diabetic. Not diabetic at all. Yeah, it's just and her they, organs stopped working. Yeah, yeah multiple. They could not figure out Multiple system organ failure. In a way, it was a little comforting to know that we weren't alone, but at the same time, it was just it's terrifying. And yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's, they're still pushing it. The CDC now recommends COVID-19 vaccination for everyone ages six months and older in the United States. Here's the vaccine information statement given to patients by their health care provider when they get the shot. On the back, section four details risk of a vaccine reaction from pain, swelling, or redness where shot is given, to myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle, or pericarditis, inflammation of the lining outside the heart, seen rarely but observed most commonly in males 12 to 39 years old, with the chance of this occurring described as low. The statement goes on to warn of a very remote chance of a vaccine causing a severe allergic reaction, other serious injury, or death. When I reached out to Pfizer, they sent me the following statement that reads in part, quote, Pfizer recognizes that there may be rare reports of myocarditis after mRNA COVID-19 vaccination. According to the CDC and other health authorities, this is an extremely rare side effect and only an exceedingly small number of people will experience it after vaccination. They added it, quote, retains a positive benefit risk profile. The hard part is, if you are the person who gets vaccinated or your child gets vaccinated and there is an adverse event, a bad reaction, uh, a heart issue or death, that hurts. Oh, absolutely. Any, any childhood death is a tragedy. You know, none of us like thinking about that or, you know, as a parent, I can't even imagine the, the pain of losing a child. I turned to Dr. Dale Bratzler for answers. To be clear, he never treated Trista Martin nor reviewed her medical records. You may remember he served as the chief COVID officer for OU Health throughout the pandemic and is the current dean of OU's Hudson College of Public Health. Some people do get myocarditis in the vast majority. It tends to be mild. Most people actually don't have to be hospitalized. A typical heart muscle is pictured up top in this image from the Mayo Clinic. On the bottom is myocarditis. The inflammation can reduce the heart's ability to pump blood and can cause chest pain, shortness of breath, and rapid or irregular heart rhythms. It's an autoimmune reaction where their body develops antibodies that attack the heart muscle and cause this inflammation of the heart, or called myocarditis. Um, um, there's no way to predict it, to my knowledge, at this point. Uh, it is not common. It's actually pretty rare. Uh, but with any 
thing that happens with the heart, it can be very serious, obviously. Dr. Bratzler says viruses like COVID-19 are one of the main causes of myocarditis and that you're more likely to get it from the virus itself than from the vaccine. He shared a comprehensive article with me published in Circulation Research in May of 2023. It was funded partly by the National Institutes of Health, the American Heart Association, and the Mayo Clinic. It found 150 cases of myocarditis reported for every 100,000 people with COVID versus 1 to 10 cases reported for every 100,000 people who received the vaccine. I've highlighted before that there are probably medications that people take as a matter of routine that have, if you look at the side effect and complication profile, are much greater than most of the vaccines that are currently recommended. You still feel that the COVID infection does more harm to someone than a COVID vaccine, and that is why you recommend people get vaccinated? I still do, yes. The Martins say not enough information is out there about adverse reactions. They point to recent Pfizer commercials. This one has the words do not attempt on the bottom of the screen as Martha Stewart sharpens a sword. She promotes getting a COVID booster shot. There's no warning about side effects or adverse reactions from the shot. By comparison, other commercials for drugs made by Pfizer and other manufacturers spend most of the time on the benefits of the drug and another portion on possible side effects and those who shouldn't take it. The Martins say they hit one roadblock after another trying to get Trista's medical records from her doctor. Led to... Um, stop calling Yeah, us. stop calling. Your daughter wasn't a patient here. And so we found uh, the text messages in her telephone uh, confirming the appointments and, and part of the of the discovery that we got there is a blank page where they she went in on October 28th 12 days before she died they've had little luck on social media as well we can't post this our story anywhere except for Twitter because it gets taken it down. Gets taken Facebook, down. Facebook, yeah. Facebook yeah. takes it down. You get put in Facebook yeah. jail if you yeah. talk about right. it. I've had I mean, accounts it's... removed. I've had been suspended. That's one of the reasons they took part in the Shot Dead documentary that explores adverse reactions and deaths reportedly from the COVID vaccine. You call me, mister. Can I take the boys to eat and play basketball? I said, yes, ma'am, of course. She took them to the park. They got off the truck and took off running across the parking lot, and he collapsed. I believe the autopsy is conclusive for the cause of death being COVID-19 vaccine-induced myocarditis. The producers tell me Facebook blocked their documentary and YouTube took it down. You can watch it by typing shotdead.org. The Martins also tell me it took eight months to get the autopsy. It lists complications with Trista's heart, her lungs, and her blood in specific medical terms. Part of her medical history shows recent coronavirus vaccination. It does not show myocarditis, as the parents say they heard doctors talking about in the hospital. Ultimately, it shows Trista's manner of death to be undetermined. It's really weird to think that that's your, your child in there, but you come in and talk to her and you ask me things and she didn't like to be cold. We have her wrapped up in a blanket that she made. She made this blanket and home like, um, have old t-shirts and stuff. They find comfort in Trista's room and strength to be her voice to warn others about their experience. Now, the Martins have a website, justiceforTrista.com, and they do have three lawsuits in the works. Now, I also reached out to the Tulsa Health Department and the American Heart Association locally. They do send their condolences, of course, to the Martin family, as do we. But they also told me they still feel the benefits of the COVID vaccine outweigh the potential risks. And we know there's a lot of debate surrounding mm -hmm. this subject. We were talking about it earlier. The one thing I think everybody can agree on, this is tragic. Oh, no absolutely. parent should have to go through that. An 18-year-old girl, so full of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. All right. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. We do have extended coverage in the story on Fox23.com.